Hello, I'm Monty Beatham, and thanks to your support, we are back with another season of Once a Warrior, but it's going to be a little bit different. Not just your past favourite warriors this year, we're going to have some of your current heroes who are some of your faves, starting with the man himself, Dallin Martinez Lesniak. Dal, thanks for joining, man. How are you? Uh, good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm excited to be here. Besides the smiles and the locks, there's a number of other reasons uh, you are a fan favourite, and it's because of moments like these. DWZ is so exciting on the right wing. Martini Zalesniak, oh. trademark. Oh, wow. There it is, Martini Zalesniak. He's got super glue on his hands. Martini Zalesniak. Martini Zalesniak. You see it, but you can't believe it. Martini Zalesniak flying. Oh, Martini Zalesniak. Martini Zalesniak. Dal, uh, what a highlight reel. Um, how does it feel when you watch that back and even in the moment itself when it unfolds and the crowd erupts? Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty surreal. Sometimes you're like, uh, what just happened? And you have to look at the big screen and, 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 and um, have a look what you did. But it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I've watched many Warriors games with um, wingers scoring tries and that, so to be doing that now for the Warriors, it's um, pretty surreal. I mean, you're Hamilton uh, born, you left at five years of age, you went over to the other side, so a mozzie. Yeah. Uh, but what were your first memories of the Warriors, man? Uh, first memories of the Warriors were probably um, my family, <laughs> my family cheering them on a lot. Um, um, I really loved Brent Webb, he was one of my favourites. Those types of guys that uh, could create things out of nothing. He was fast, he was nippy, and I played fullback quite a lot as a kid, so um, I wanted to be like, a, bit, a bit like him. The Penrith Panthers, you played against the Warriors uh, for the first time. Uh, remember what that was like, and, and who, were the, who were the guys that you hated to play against? Manu was um, someone I always looked up to as a, as a kid, so I remember lining up against him, and I'm just like, I remember my dad talking to me before the game too, and he goes, son, just tackle his legs. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen his legs? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, was, um, Manu was someone, yeah, didn't really like playing against just because I looked up to him as a kid, and um, and wasn't fear, but it was like the, mm. just someone that had done so many things to other players, you just didn't want to be on his highlights reel. Okay, so... You came over to the club finally after a long time, obviously early fanhood, uh, uh, you, you, your family loved the Warriors and so on. Um, when did you, you think it was actually going to be something uh, that you were going to come to the Warriors club? Well, I never really thought of it because in previous negotiations, the Warriors just ne never were never on the table. Um, even um, just me thinking that I couldn't, I couldn't play for the Warriors because you had to live in New Zealand and I was living in Australia. So it just never yeah. crossed my mind. And then um, when the Bulldogs were letting me go, then the Warriors came in and um, as soon as they came in, uh, we chatted about it and I really wanted to raise my kids, bring them back to where I was from, let yeah. my wife experience where I was from too. Um, so she was all on board. Uh, she's very supportive of my wife, I'm very lucky. I went over to my parents' place and um, my, my dad's a diehard Warriors fan, he has been since 95. Yeah. And um, he's here and he's, he supported Penrith and that because we were all playing and it was our home home team but he's always he'd go to some of our Penrith games or um, training sessions with Warriors top signs my dad was asking me how negotiations yeah. were going and then I told him well I guess you came to the table and he goes and I was like he was like oh who and I said oh, the Warriors and he goes straight away he was like yeah yep son that's that's the place to go you got into camp there with the Warriors it was halfway through the season it's never easy when you join um, a side in those circumstances and through COVID probably didn't feel real because you didn't have a place or a true identity like going back to Mount Smart at the time. Yeah. When we were in Redcliffe, um, like yeah, it was our home for that time, but it just knew that oh, this isn't our home. Like this is just what we got to do at this time, and we'll eventually get home. And um, that's why when we first got back here, I got to sort of get back to my roots and understand a bit more about my culture. You don't get much in in, in Oz uh, with the Maori culture and mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. Um, the first couple of months we moved back here from um, from Redcliffe. Um, my son attended school and um, within a few months he was singing Māori songs and I came home one time and we were learning Te Aroha because we were doing a pōwhiri yeah. and I was um, practicing it and then I heard him join in and I was like, yeah. 
I was like, Sam, come here. Yeah. <laughs> I said, how do you know this sign here? It's oh, school. And I was like, oh, it's, um, for me, it was everything I sort of pictured when I signed with the Warriors. Um, mm. It's coming to fruition. And, um, and yeah, now my kids, are, um, my kids are just thriving at school. Yeah. Uh, my wife's loving it here and um, makes my job a lot easier. A thousand and thirty yeah. odd days you hadn't been home. And I remember that game really well. Um, that week off, uh, when you're coming to go and talk to us about the excitement, talk to us about the feel within the camp, and then obviously once with your own game day. Yeah, I remember that week. It's um, it's pretty clear in my mind that we had a pool fitty. Um, I remember, and that then for me, I was just sitting there. I was like, this is why I signed at the club. So I was sitting in the pool fitty. I was like, man, this is, and I was just getting those, you know, that those tingles. Yeah, that's those feelings. And I was like, I was sitting there. I was like, man, this is exactly why I signed signed here. And I remember running out, it was it's still a surreal moment um, for me in my career. It's definitely a highlight. And then the crowd's roaring, um, the fans are close, so you hear everything they say, um, especially when I was at other clubs and coming here. And I was actually pulling on that jersey and running out to Mount Smart and having them on my side. Yeah. Uh, it, was quite, it was quite cool. Um, but yeah, I remember getting sprayed a lot of times by some, probably my family members, to be honest. <laughs> Dane Laurie, <laughs> his head was stuck between my legs. I remember doing some kind of wrestling move and, yeah. and um, pulling him down. That was, um, he's a mate of mine too, so it was, uh, that was a pretty funny moment there. But I think we got off the back fence quite a lot that game because mm. the adrenaline was going and um, yeah, my body was very sore the next day. The way you run and how big the athletes are these days, I mean, it takes a toll on your body because you're direct, you get over their vantage line, which is what is asked from you. How crippling is it the next day when you wake up? Give, give us an indication at home on how sore you can be. Yeah, I'll wake up the next morning and sort of get up out of bed and then just fall back in because of how sore you are. But yeah, quite, quite sore. Um, sometimes I message Mars and Marcelo. Um, he, I played with him at the Bulldogs. I went to school with Mars. Okay, bro, you up yet? <laughs> you walking around yet? Um, but yeah, it's, um, it takes a toll. But um, when you win, and um, mm. everyone's smiling and happy. It's um, it's uh, it's worth it. Uh, the signing of uh, Andrew Webster. Uh, what did you know about Webby at that stage, uh, if anything at all? And yeah. what were your expectations of Webby and and the side? Um, Webby had coached my brother at the Tigers, um, so he knew my brother. My brother spoke highly of him as well. He's definitely by far my best coach. Just everything, he's not just on the field, but off the field as well. He just seems to dive in that little bit deeper into understanding my family, my wife, my kids. And I'm so grateful that um, he's at the Warriors because um, what he's done with me and, and, and my yeah. game and just simplifying my role. And he talks about clarity a lot, um, being clear. As if you're clear, yeah. you can do your job. And uh, that's definitely one thing that I got is clear in my role and what my my role is in the team and our game mm. plan and how much it actually goes to winning the game. For me, is, um, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle and um, they're just all fitting nicely at the, t at the moment and it's a credit to Webby because um, he's the one in charge of all that and um, he's taking mm. not only my game but a lot of the boys in our team um, to another level. And Going into my 11th year and I felt, felt like the last two years I've learned more than the, yeah. the previous yeah. nine years. And Talking to him, I was like, um, I was like, man, where were you the last nine years of my career? <laughs> Culture and resilience, two themes that came through loud and strong last year. I think a big part of that too is, is what you're building in the background gets reinforced with the results on the field. Yeah, we'd learned everything we had learned um, in that preseason, and Webby was so um, so adamant he had a way to win games. And then the more we started doing it, and the more it kept coming along, the belief the belief started coming. And they're like, oh, okay, this is, it, it works. Like, let's keep doing it. So you've been lined up to be on that right wing. Uh, you get injured. Uh, you're not a, uh, a, a part of it all. Uh, I mean, what were you doing to, to, to keep fit? And what were you doing to struggle with the, the FOMO that you had? Yeah, I was, having, um, I was having heaps of FOMO. I was actually, I think, a few games in, I was like, man, am I even going to get back into this team? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming back and playing New South Wales Cup was actually... Um, like a lot of, I, I always go back to that game. That was that was a big yeah. that was a big thing for me. I was excited to go back and play cup, and I was coming off a big injury and sort of find my not love for the game, but find my motivation and mm. um, and I think that that game sort of um, woke me up and was like, 
um, I need to do something, otherwise my, my spot can be just taken just like that. And do something you did, it was round seven, uh, you got your first yeah. chance yeah. In, in the Warriors jumper. Uh, talk to me about that day, the feeling and, and what you remember. Yeah, it was, um, I remember, yeah, it was at Mount Smart, uh, being able to play against the Cowboys. It was, uh, I remember playing and um, I was real rusty. I was, um, it's the little things that we've learned, like the transport, everything was just, just out. Um, yeah. And I felt, I didn't feel like a liability, but I was like, man, I'm just, I'm just not, um, I'm not meshing well. I feel like I'm, I'm letting the boys down a lot because yeah. I'm, and then um, I was fortunate enough, Webby just, Webby seen some things that I was doing well and, um, and sort of just kept coaching me, trusting me. And um, yeah, started, I think after that second game, it started, my, my bearing started coming back and started getting into my rhythm. And, um, and yeah, it was, um, it was quite a year to remember. Let's talk about the year, because 20 games straight in a row after having that time off. And now a lot of people remember you and what you were doing. 24 tries in one season. Let's talk about that first, because that is the club record. <laughs> Took it off Francis Malley. He's not happy with Francis Malley. Um, first and foremost, taking off a club legion like that. How do you feel? Yeah, um, I hope he's not too, too <laughs> bad because, um, I mean, I got Sean, I got Chance, I got Murata, I got Rocco. Um, yeah, just what they were doing. For, people see me put the ball down, um, but they don't, they don't really get to see what is actually happening in the middle and what's giving us so much space out wide. Um, so, yeah, I get to take all the glory. <laughs> yeah. I get all the, the, um, the praise, but playing on the outside, those boys on this right edge is... Um, yeah, I'm counting my blessings. Rocco Berry, um, your centre, um, a, a massive year of growth. Yeah. Uh, what is his strengths and what do you like as a, as a teammate on that right flank? Yeah, real, a big part of the right edge and what he does. He, he's quite quiet and shy, uh, yeah. but he doesn't realise how much he um, helps me uh, on a kick chase. I don't know if you've seen a, the way we kick chase in that. Him and I, it's like a race down there. Um, yeah. But just like a little word to me or something when he's leaving, like, come on down, let's go. Like, um, for me, that's that's massive because sometimes you can get stuck in your in your head and yeah, um, yeah. He always picks the right option. He knows when to pass, when not to pass, and um, I think that's why people have trouble defending him. Is that he's not just one dimensional where he'll just feed the ball or, mm. or he's not just that person that's going to dummy and keep going himself. He actually almost always picks the right option. And we talk a lot about what they're doing. And um, or like at training, if there's an opportunity where we're like, oh, bro, I had him there, and he he takes the feedback quite well, and um, and I think that's why he's he's doing so well, is he's he's a sponge and he's learning so much from Sean, from Chance, from mm. Webby, yeah, and, and I'm just I get to sit outside, I'm like, yeah, keep learning, brother, keep yeah, learning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a big sheriff, uh, Marata Nuikori. Uh, what's it like? It must be better playing on his side than against yeah. him, because he's been pretty much the enforcer. Yeah, he's big, he's scary, and um, every half has to check, make sure they check him, because if they don't, Sean's the type of guy to pick the right, right pass as well, and um, if you don't show up on him, then he's, um, he's going through. So we, um, we were up there at the end of the season, the, the regular season last year as the top um, defensive edge in the comp. Yeah. And I think what he doesn't get enough praise for is what he does in defense. Um, and just like some of the some of the movements that he's doing mm. for me sometimes i'm i'm tackling that touchy and i go like i go straight to Murata. like i thank the boys around me but i go straight to Murata and be like shot bro like i'm mm. so comfortable out there because of what yeah. you're doing um so yeah, he's a, he's defensively he's um i see what he's doing it's making my job a lot yeah, easier yeah going to go to what you do and how you finish put the icing on the cake because that is some sweet icing man <laughs> aerial moves unreal talk to me do you practice it is it instinct because uh, it's it's a fan fave yeah um, a lot of it was when I was younger like uh, mucking around um, before a field session there's pads and that out you just muck around oh boys this is a try line you guys have to try score uh, let's jump or something like that but Rich Ager gave us a few um, a few sessions last year and we've had a few this year with um, finishing um, mm. and it's we don't do much on the wing so um, <laughs> when we um, when we score tries we like to make it dramatic um, and it's quite fun it's, it's, it's one of the yeah. fun things about our, our spot is um, in, in challenging situations um, seeing if you can get that ball down and uh, when um, people say you can't and you do it, it makes it a lot better. And a lot goes into it. Um, my, my thought process is, because um, there's sometimes where you can, you can step in 
and you can but it um, depends where the defender's at like um, my thing is um, catch the ball at speed is the first thing um, mm. making sure that you're you're not just standing still um, and seeing where that because the fullback there's always a fullback covering um, depends how far you are in front and and uh, knowing if you got it or not and, and the, my first thought is um, just get your legs in the air um, we have to worry, that, worry about is putting the ball down so um, legs in the air knowing when the defender is seeing if you can because cutting back in is the better yeah. way but uh, sometimes it's there but sometimes you just can't because the angle that the fullback's coming on but if I had to say to any kid out there it'd be legs in the air and then all you have to worry about is the ball and your preference of scoring tries, is it uh, to beat an individual on the ground or is it scarp in the air for an aerial assault? Oh, I like, um, I love these rough flower growing up. So, um, yeah, definitely air. Anytime you can jump over someone and score a try like that, that's, um, that's definitely a favourite. <laughs> do, you, do you have a favourite try of the year last year in 2023? Um, yeah, favourite try would probably be, have to be the Manly game. Um, where I got to come through back through the middle. Yeah. Um, I, it was one of my favorites because because I was just reacting to things and yeah. didn't really know what was happening. It was just like, fire, what's happening, what's happening? The mind's just going so fast and then it sort of just slows things down for you a bit. And um, But yeah, something like that, you just look back and you're just like, fire out, like, what the heck just happened? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four tries, 2023 against the Dragons. Uh, career high. Talk me through <laughs> yeah. that moment when you score that try in St. George and a yeah. uh, bit of a moment, bit of care from your right edge there. I remember jumping and um, getting ready to go celebrate and as I got up, my calf's cramped and the boys are coming over, thought I did my calf or something again. That guy on the ground uh, with yeah. the photos, talk me through that moment, man. Because uh, yeah. he wanted to capture that shot. Yeah. He would not put that camera down. Yeah, I remember him being so close and as I was tumbling, I sort of caught him in my eye. I was like, oh no, he's going to get hurt here because I was going to protect myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it sort of just happened to roll, roll and hit him perfectly where I could help him up and um, and yeah he decided to keep capturing photos I was about to leave him on the ground if he, if he kept going but um, but yeah, it was quite a it was quite a cool moment and um, some of the shots he got was, um, was pretty cool. When we look back to some of the dinosaurs I know Henry Farfili and also Francis Melly would have loved it if they had all yeah. the content around to capture all their moments yeah. um, but you know I know when he looks back as an old boy and he sees you do the coconut he sees you do the Walkman yeah. um, he loves that I mean a special bond you have between the old boys and yeah and definitely you? uh it's it's actually um it's pretty crazy sometimes when the uh, like players like you as well um and the old boys come around training and you just look at them like oh, i used to watch these kids as a as a yeah. kid and um they, they're talking to me like henry like yeah the reason I did the coconut was for yeah it was definitely for henry and he was one uh, he was known for his try celebrations and and uh some cool ones as well and it actually got to a point where he was messaging me. Uh, we, were, we were talking to each other on Instagram, and um, I did the coconut one, and he was like, he was grateful as, and then he goes, bro, you need to do the Walkman one next. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, I was like, oh, it's the walk. I said, I didn't see the, I had never seen the Walkman one. So I went on YouTube and I had a look at his, the Walkman. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll do it. I'll do yeah. it for him. Um, Walkman, unheard of. You wouldn't yeah. have even gone and seen a Walkman in your time, the Discman. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of stuff that just passed you by, man. Yeah. I just want to go back to the science in terms of how they support and how they commit to, uh, with the movement that is up the wires. Plenty of uh, signs out there for you, man. Uh, what has been some of your favourites and how does it feel when you go out there and, and you've got so, so much love for you? Yeah, it was uh, still now, it's sort of, um, it's crazy how much support um, I've got, not all of us, how much we've all got support, but yeah, there was a few signs that I've seen that cracked me up before a game or yeah. you don't get to see them all, um, but yeah, it's, it gives you adrenaline, it pumps you up, it makes you makes you want to keep going, like um, that people are noticing the hard work that you're putting in mm. and um, it's, it's, it's being noticed, so you might like it just I guess it's a human instinct. You gotta, you want to keep going. You want to keep making them proud. You want to yeah. keep seeing signs there of, of you. It's um, like it, it's quite nice to be um, recognised for some of the, mm. the hard work um, that you put in. I think one that really sticks out was um, I was running out to do my warm up, and this guy was holding a big sign up that said Air Dallin. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, I loved, I loved, Jordan, <laughs> I loved Jordans and, and yeah. shoes and that. So when I seen that, I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Can you give me a little flick of that, of that mullet? <laughs> that. Uh, is there soul glow on that or, or what? Yes, almost, almost. So almost. the routine with the locks and tell us you're keeping the locks for 2024, yeah. at least to start. Yeah, 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 they're going to stay, yeah. And the routine, is it a weekly haircut? Yeah, I, 
yeah, well, they say weekly. I get it whenever the massage start getting a bit long, but, um, but yeah, I don't really have probably every once every two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be like Samson with uh, you know the the strength is in your in your hair. I hope not, but uh, it's here to stay. So maybe maybe it might be that. First time in the final series for a very long time for the club. Um, Newcastle Knights came to town. Yeah. Ten wins on the trot. Uh, Callum Ponga running hot. Um, the pressure was on the boys. Uh, Sean Johnson hadn't trained much all week and did a yeah. did a warm up. There wasn't even a full warm-up. I was worried. How are your thoughts that night? And, and talk to me about that experience. We knew it was going to be a big occasion. Um, you could say we, there were good nerves. We weren't nervous in the fact that coming up against the Knights, uh, we were nervous that uh, we wanted to like make sure we got our game on yeah. and, um, and doing what we had practiced all week. Uh, we had an awesome week at training. We were clear with our roles and what we needed to do. Um, each of us, like I knew exactly my role and how I was going to play a part in winning the game. And yeah, it all just started unfolding. Um, our game plan was happening, we were doing it and the crowd was roaring. Um, there were still times where we got things wrong, and, but it was almost one of the most complete games we had all season, I feel, from all the little things that we were doing. Uh, it's definitely it's going to be a game that I'll remember um, for the rest of my life. It was uh, probably up there with uh, just homecoming's been the best one, but it was definitely up there with the same amount of like the how loud it was. And I think that after the game when they uh, we they sung the team song and we out of yeah the court, yeah that's the first that time was, that's uh, happened live right yeah that was um, that was that was crazy. And Dow's words for you personally uh, sum up 2023. It was a year to remember, but as we did fall short, um, so for me it was a motivating year as well. Um, and a year that can give me confidence knowing that um, we can get better as a team, as a player, as a person. And heading into this year, it's, um, it was a learning year last year, I, I feel. We were still all learning new shapes, new things. And mm. we entered a preseason where um, we got to take off from where we left off in terms of learning. And um, we're still learning now. So uh, we've learned some new things that we're excited to um, uh, put into games this year and um, get better as a team and um, yeah just um, excited really excited for this year and running out alongside boys that you've done a tough preseason with you you've built um, a lot of relationships outside of footy as well um, it's probably I it's probably the closest I've been um, in terms of with my family and that with um, other players families mm. and that and we all hang out outside of footy and, and do things together and it goes a lot to when you're on the field um, and making special moments together. Yeah. Um, it's going to be something we look back and our kids look back at. Dale, once a warrior, always a warrior, man. Uh, you've always been so humble and, and, you know, giving of your time. So we thank you for your continued service in the, in the club duty, man. Uh, no worries. Thank you. It's a privilege. I'm on to be with them. Thank you for joining me on Once a Warrior. Next week, we have one of the toughest guys to ever wear the jumper, Jazz Tavanga. See you then. DWZ is so exciting on the right wing. While Teddy's a Lesniak. Oh. Trademark. Oh, wow. There it is. With Teddy's a Lesniak. He's got Super Bowl on his head. Tenny's a Lesnia flying! Oh, what Tenny's a Lesnia! What Tenny's a Lesnia! Oh! What Tenny's a Lesnia! The pass was so good! What Tenny's a Lesnia! Oh! This time he gives it away! What Tenny's a Lesnia! Oh, no way! Stop it! Dallin's done it right there!